This is the start of side two. And we now come to the Christmassy part of our tape, which I hope, and we all hope, that you'll enjoy. And so over to Joan, who will read the first one. And I'm going to tell you about Saturday night at the Bethlehem Arms. Very quiet, really, for a Saturday. Just the old couple come to visit relations, who take the double room above the yard, and both of them in bed by our boss nine, left me with the other one, that stranger. Sat like he was set till doomsday at the corner of the bar, sipping small beer, dead slow, and keeping mum. Those beady tax collector's eyes of his on my reflection in the glass behind the bar, watching me, watching me. And when he did get round to saying something, his talk was like those lines of gossamer that fishermen send whispering across the water to hire and lure and hook unwary fish. Not my type. And anyway, I'd been on the go since five, dead beat I was. Some of us have a bed to go to, I thought to myself. And I was just about to call time when the knock came at the door. At first, I was for turning them away. We only have two rooms, see, and both of them were taken. But something desperate in the woman's eyes made me think again. And I told them they could rough it in the barn if they didn't mind the cows and mules for company. I know, I know, soft. That's me. I yawned. Locked up. Turned out the lights. Rinsed my hands to lose the smell of beer. Went up to bed. A day like any other. That's how it is. Nothing much ever happens here. It never snows at Christmas in that dry and dusty land. Instead of freezing blizzards, there are palms and drifting sands. And years ago, a stable and above, a glorious star and three wise men who followed it on camels from afar, while sleepy on the quiet hills, a shepherd gave a cry. He'd seen a crowd of angels in the silent, starlit sky. In the stable... Ox and ass stood very still and calm, gazing at the babies, safe and snug in Mary's arms. But Joseph, lost in shadow, face lit by an oil lamp's glow, stood wondering that first Christmas day, two thousand years ago. No, in the street. I did not sleep last night. The falling snow was beautiful and white. I dressed, sneaked down the stairs, and opened wide the door. I had not seen such snow before. Our grubby little street had gone. The world was brand new, and everywhere there was pureness in the air. I felt such peace. Watching every flake, my heart felt more and more awake. I thought I'd learned all there was to know about the trillion million different kinds of swirling, frosty, falling flakes of snow. But that was not so. I did not know how vividly it lit the world with such a peaceful glow. Upstairs my parents slept, yet I could not drag myself away from the sight to call them down and have them share the mute miracle that was everywhere. The snow seemed to fall for me alone. How beautiful the grubby little street had grown. 
my dear, said Prince Albert, you seem to be in a mood of the deepest glums. Now, I have an idea. It might help to cheer you as Christmas comes. It's a custom back in my homeland. A spruce or a fir, a small tree, hung with ribbons, bright papers, all lit up with wax tapers. I'll arrange it. Uh, that's, that's if you agree... The Queen's voice was cool. My dear Albert, I confess I'm a little confused. Do you really desire to set Windsor on fire? We are definitely not amused. But... Ignoring the Queen's disapproval, the Prince Consort, in great secrecy, with their children, a maid, and some courtiers to aid, dressed a sumptuous Christmas tree. A magical, glittering vision as Victoria was brought on the scene. Her eyes shone with delight and her mood changed that night. We are greatly amused, said the Queen. Snowflakes are falling as soft as pussy willows. Perhaps it's the Snow Queen shaking out her pillows. It might be showers of stardust falling from the sky, or a little fluffy cloud who's just started to cry, or drips of ice cream dripping from a giant's ice cream cone, or scales from an ice dragon flying all alone, or feathers from a swan flying to the frozen lake. Or maybe Father Christmas is icing a cake. Could it be white leaves dropping from rice paper trees? No, it's all the Christmas fairies dancing on the breeze. The holly and the ivy. The holly and the ivy. One's prickly, one's not. I sat down on the prickly one and in the air I shot and shot up through the ceiling and shot up in the sky and wished a Merry Christmas to the pigeons passing by. I shot above the rainbow and climbing towards heaven. I wished a Merry Christmas to a Boeing 747. I kept shooting higher and higher and soon I was wishing Merry Christmas to the man in the moon. Then I started to tumble and fall back to earth. To slow me down, I flapped my arms for all that I was worth. I fell back through the ceiling and landed on a chair, but luckily on a different one, and the holly was not there. So just you be careful when Christmas comes around. Be sure to check beneath you when you're starting to sit down. And just you remember the thing I forgot. The holly and the ivy, one's prickly, one's not. I did not sleep last night. The falling snow was beautiful and white. I went downstairs and opened oh. wide the door. I had not seen such snow before. A grubby little street had gone. All looked brand new, and everywhere there was a pureness in the air. I felt such peace 
watching every flake, I felt more and more awake. I thought I'd learned all there was to know about the trillion, million different kinds of swirling, frosty flakes of falling snow. But that was not so. I did not know how vividly it lit the world with such a peaceful glow. Upstairs, my parents slept. I could not drag myself away from that sight to call them down and have them share the mute miracle of the snow. It seemed to fall for me alone. How beautiful our little street had grown. My, my house smells of Christmas, pine, resin, cinnamon, gingerbread, cloves. We made mince pies and fur cone swags, pomanders and mistletoe balls. On the wall there's a, spe a spiced apple garland. The fir tree greens the hall. Red berried holly and ivy tumble over the open front door. My house smells of Christmas. Pine resin, cinnamon, gingerbread cloves. Ready for the star and feathers of snow. A newborn child, myrrh, frankincense, gold. To light my house with that special Christmas glow. And now a short interlude from the children of Grange Park School. Christmas morning. Last year on Christmas morning, we got up really early and took the dog for a walk across the downs. It wasn't snowing, but the hills were white with frost and our breath froze in the air. Judy rushed around like a crazy thing, as though Christmas meant something special to her. The sheep huddled together, looking tired, as if they'd been up all night watching the stars. We stood at the highest point and thought about what Christmas means and looked over the white hills and looked up at the blue sky. And the hills seemed to go on forever and the sky had no bounds and you could imagine a world at peace. Now we come to a hymn for Christmas Day. Christians, awake, salute the happy morn whereon the Saviour of the world was born. Rise to adore the mystery of love which hosts of angels chanted from above. With them the joyful tidings first begun of God incarnate and the Virgin Son. Then, to the watchful shepherds it was told, who heard the angelic herald's voice, Behold, I bring good tidings of a Saviour's birth 
to you and all the nations upon earth. This day hath God fulfilled his promised word. This day is born a saviour, Christ the Lord. In David's city, shepherds ye shall find the long foretold redeemer of mankind. Wrapped up in swaddling clothes, the babe divine lies in a manger. This shall be your sign. He spake, and straightway the celestial choir in hymns of joy unknown before conspire. The praises of redeeming love they sung, and heaven's whole orb with hallelujahs rang. God's highest glory was their anthem still, peace upon earth and mutual good will. To Bethlehem straight the enlightened shepherds ran to see the wonder God had wrought for man and found with Joseph and the blessed maid her son, the saviour, in a manger laid. Amazed, the wondrous story they proclaim, the first apostles of his infant fame, while Mary keeps and ponders in her heart the heavenly vision which the swains impart. They to their flocks, still praising God, return, and their glad hearts within their bosoms burn. Let us, like these good shepherds then, employ our grateful voices to proclaim the joy. Like Mary, let us ponder in our mind God's wondrous love in saving lost mankind. Artless and watchful as these favoured swains, while virgin meekness in the heart remains. Trace we the babe who has retrieved our loss from his poor manger to his bitter cross. Treading his steps, assisted by his grace, till man's first heavenly state again takes place. Then may we hope the angel throngs among to sing redeemed a glad triumphal song, he that was born upon this joyful day. Around us all, his glory shall display. Saved by his love, incessant, we shall sing of angels and of angel men, the King. On the 13th day of Christmas, my true love phoned me up. Well, I suppose I should be grateful. You've obviously gone to a lot of trouble and expense, or maybe off your head. Yes, I did like the birds. The small ones anyway were fun, if rather messy. But now the hens have roosted on my bed, and the rest are nested on the wardrobe. It's hard to sleep with all that cooing, let alone the cackling of the geese whose eggs are everywhere, but mostly in a broken, smelly heap on the sofa. No, why should I mind? I can't get any peace anywhere. The lounge is full of drummers, thumping tom-toms, and sprawling lords crashed out from manic leaping. The kitchen is crammed with cows and milkmaids and smells of a million stink bombs and enough sour milk to last a year. The pipers? I'd forgotten them. They were no trouble. I paid them and they went but I can't get rid of these young ladies. They won't stop dancing or turn the music down, and they're always in the bathroom, squealing as they skid across the flooded floor. No, I don't need a plum around. It's just the swans. Where else can they swim? Poor things. I think they're going mad like me. When I went to wash my hands, one ate the soap, another swallowed the gold rings, and the pear tree died. Too dry. So thanks for nothing, love. Goodbye. The Zoo Creatures Christmas When Santa reached the city zoo, he knew exactly what to do. 
He sorted through his sack and sleigh and left some treats for Christmas Day. Ginger socks for the desert fox, colourful ties for the butterflies, soft grey gloves for the turtle doves, furry bloomers for chili pumas, big braziers for the grizzly bears, slinky frocks for the lady crocs, enormous shoes for the kangaroos, tiny pants for the soldier ants, royal dresses for the lionesses, velvet capes for elegant apes, small red hats for the vampire bats, stripy suits for the bandicoots, petticoats for the nanny goats, an extra long scarf for the old giraffe, slim black hose for the carrion clothes, crows, beg your pardon, toppers and tails for the snooty snails, comfy slippers for sea lion flippers, and warm pyjamas for sleepy llamas. So did the creatures cheer and purr, and were they pleased? Of course they were. <laughs> Now, how would you think about a Martian Christmas, then? After a long year and a half in space, we reached Mars, December the 25th, 2033. Christmas dinner was all planned. Freeze-dried turkey and roast potatoes with Christmas pud squeezed from a tube to follow. Presents were a problem. We hadn't been able to stop off for shopping on the way. And we went outside for the first time and got depressed. Sand. Nothing but sand. Maybe the three wise men would come plodding around that sand dune on their camels, someone said. But we didn't laugh. We were too busy thinking about Christmas. But that was 50 million miles away. Then we saw the star hanging like a lantern in the east. It's Earth, someone said. We just looked and looked and looked. It must have been the brightness of it that made all our eyes water. What will go into the Christmas stocking while the clock on the mantelpiece goes tick-tocking? An orange, a penny, some sweets, not too many. A trumpet, a dolly, a sprig of red holly a book and a top, and a grocery shop, some beads in a box, an ass and an ox, and a lamb, plain and good, all whittled in wood, a white sugar dove, a handful of love, another of fun, and it's very near done, a big silver star on top, there you are. Come morning, you'll wake to the clock's tick-tocking, and that's what you'll find in the Christmas stocking. We wish you all a very merry, healthy Christmas and a very happy New Year. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. From all of us. We're sorry that Rod couldn't be with us tonight, and I'm sure he would have said his wishes too. Oh, yes, he would. Yes. We have reached the end of our program for this week. Thank you for listening. So from the team of... Joan, Beverly, and myself, Lillian, it's goodbye. Happy Cheerio. Happy Christmas. Bye. Happy Christmas. Happy Christmas. And a healthy new year. Yeah. Please remember to turn over the address label in your postal packet, put the cassette into the packet, and return it to us as soon as possible in readiness for the next edition, which will be on the 8th of January, 2015.